I don't care. This is so random. I don't bring it. I didn't take it out. I don't want to do it. There's no homework. Let me have the other side of these civilians. What? What? I captured my mental hold on. I don't know. Well, this is yesterday, so let's take it today during the fourth period. Hey, bro, I'm going to close the paper. Where's that? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Gank. Oh, sorry. Oh, and That's fine. Dosage and like toxicity. Ellie, can you bring up like I just kind of thought about all the chain all the time. That's crazy. I just want to talk about the crazy all the time. I think you're going to do this. Skip one. Are you? That's wrong. Oh, yeah, they are. That's wrong. That's wrong. He's going to Hey guys, we're on page uh, 23. Um, we're working with these uh, word problems, um, but you know, relying on all the same formulas that we've seen before. Um, so have you guys copy these down here. So we have, uh, and you can also refer to the back of your summary sheet, uh, back of your calendar. The summary sheet has all the formula and have it um, um, there for you as well. So we've been using um, magnitude, which is uh, the Wagner theorem, uh, inverse tangents, um, magnitude cosine theta, magnitude sine theta, uh, to go from direction and magnitude back to component form and then also angle between um two vectors What's the the top? All right. All right, so let's look at number one here. Um, we have uh, train A and train B depart uh, from the same station. The path that train A takes can be represented by the vector 3312. The path that train B takes can be represented by 554. Find the angle between the two vectors. Okay, so we just rely on our angle 
um, cosine theta formula. Dot product divided by the pro the the mul multiplied mul uh, product of their um, magnitudes. So dot product right? a sub one a sub two top plus B sub one, B sub two. So dot product first, followed by um, the, the mag magnitudes multiplied together. We enter all this into our calculator. Uh, wait a second for me to double check that. One, two, three, three. Okay, number two, a plane is flying at a direction of 115 degrees at 530 miles per hour. So think of this as your direction. That's your magnitude. So we can go through our formula, right? Magnitude cosine theta, magnitude sine theta. Component form.
OK, uh, any questions with two? Captain sails a boat for 200 kilometers. That's our magnitude. And bearing is direction related, but we want our direction and standard position. So how do we get from bearing to standard position? What's our formula? Do you remember? We got to involve what? 450. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So now it feels like number two. Right, so before Jordan is riding the bus to school, the bus travels north for 4.5 miles, east for two miles, and then north 60 degree east for 1.5 miles. Find the component of the resultant. So resultant means I'm going to do what with each of these vectors? Add them, yep. So let's create three vectors. The north and east will be easy. And then anything that is at a diagonal direction, uh, we have to invert. Uh, involve um, uh, sine and cosine. So I'll call these vector one, vector two, and vector three. Okay. Bus travels north for 4.5 miles. What could be my vector for the first leg? Mm -hmm. Zero, 4.5. East for two miles. So north, south, east, west. Good. Positive, yep. Yeah. And third one is north 60 degree east. So that means we have to figure out what that standard position is. That means I'm starting at 90 and I'm moving left 60 degrees. Good. So how do I adjust that uh, for because that's, that's the diagonal direction, right? How can I involve um, sine and cosine, right? So magnitude cosine theta, magnitude sine theta. So the resultant is um, leg one of the trip plus leg two of the trip plus leg three of the trip, add them all together and we can leave it in component form. It's not asking for direction or magnitude of the resultant vector, just the component. So 1.5 miles, is that your magnitude? 1.5, sorry, 1.5 cosine 30, my bad. Uh, I should have been the 30 for theta.
All right, any questions with or I think uh, because it says uh, the third leg of the trip is north 60 degree east for 1.5 miles. So that's my magnitude and my direction is at 30 degrees. All right, next up, uh, an airplane is flying with an airspeed of 500 miles per hour on on a heading due north. If a 50 mile per hour wind is blowing at a bearing of 280, determine the velocity and direction of the plane relative to the ground. So um, I want us to see if we can start off with this big picture here. We know our resultant vector is going to be whichever direction and magnitude the airplane is flying, but then the wind is going to throw it off course a little bit, right? So we know that whatever the airplane is trying to do, plus whatever the wind it, uh, is do, uh, impacted by the wind, we know adding those together will give us the final direction that the plane ends up being flying, right? Because the flying airplane may be pointing at a certain direction, but if the wind is pushing it, it's going to throw it off course a little bit. Right? So let's find vector for the airplane. Let's find the, uh, the vector for the wind, and then we'll add them together to, to get our results in vector. This is the terminal velocity and direction of the plane relative to the ground. So basically it's asking, you know, what is the final product going to look like um, after those two, after the wind pushes that plane? So the airplane is trying to fly, uh, fly at an airspeed of 500 miles per hour on heading due north. So that should be easy, right? How can we create a vector for the airplane? Right, we said that if, if something is uh, pointing north, south, east, west, it should just be easy for us to create our vectors, right? Good, zero, 500, right? So what you're saying? Now the wind, we got to do some more work there because it's not at a nice, easy direction. So we have to um, figure that out, right? So it's blowing at a bearing of 280 degrees. So this is related to direction, but it says bearing. So we have to make an adjustment. What's theta going to be? Or how do we find theta? That's subtracted from 450. Oops, uh, 170. So we have our adjusted standard position direction along with our um, magnitude. Involve sine and cosine. We add these together. That'll get us our resultant vector. And once we get our resultant vector, then we can find everything uh, from that resultant vector. We can do the direction using inverse tangent, and then we can do the uh, magnitude uh, using Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So horizontal component plus horizontal component, vertical component plus vertical component.
So, um, velocity and direction, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so we're going to do inverse tangent, but let's look at which direction because we anytime we use inverse tangent, we have to understand that the calculator is only giving us back reference angle. We may have to make an adjustment. So which quadrant do we expect this to be pointing in? Quadrant two, yeah, so we have to involve 180 to get it into a quadrant two degree measure. So to get it into second quadrant, we can involve 180. So 180 minus 84 will get us to a degree measure between 90 and 180, which is what we want. All right, go ahead and um, your classwork is page 24. And after, uh, I want you guys to try each problem on your own, but I'll definitely show the work and talk through each problem as well. Mm -hmm. So they could do this one. Why would it be the magnitude? Um, or this one? Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. So why, why would it be like 500 cosine 90? It's like not going to be that. I'm not going to be the degrees. Why is it always 500 cosine 90, 500 cosine 90? Yeah, you can do it. That would be the same thing. Sign of 90 to see well, that's going to be like the bound. Sign of 90 is going. So, okay. So, so it's the same. It'll be the same. Yeah. Okay. But if this is the worst south, east, west, I'm, I'm just going to just go left and up. Yeah, horizontal component is zero, vertical component is 500. Okay. I don't have to use sign of the So, if you want to, you can not okay, do it. Um, skip number three for now. Number three is working backwards a little bit. I'll save that for the end. So do one, two, four, and five. And then um, the three is the, the strange one. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, three is okay. Which one is the strange one? Oh, 
OK, that's not until tomorrow. OK, so sorry. Uh, three is straightforward. Um, yeah, so we'll go we'll go to these. So I, I thought I thought this was uh, providing information that was uh, different than what we were hoping for. Number one is just a uh, similar to the one that you just did on um, the previous page. Uh, we just use our formula for angle between vectors. Number two, um, you have your magnitude. You have something related to direction, but it's north 50 degree west. So that means you're starting at 90 degrees and you're going to the left. You're going 50 degree west. So 90 plus 50 is 140. This is oh, yeah, the it's only you the blank. That made it look stable. If it just says bearing of the forty degree, then you subtract the point. Yeah, if it says bearing, yeah. But if they give you a specific direction, then you start that direction and move to that program. The system is all about the law. It's not a matter of it. Well, I don't know if I can hear all that stuff. I don't know if I can hear all that stuff. Yeah, that looks like a better. Yeah, it's not clear. That's fine. But, but, um, yeah, it's not clear. That's fine. You don't have to show the radical. That's just me working it through. You can have a decimal value here and get it down to the. Yeah. But your process is the same as mine, it just looks a little bit different. Thank you. Is the standard? That's standard, yeah. If they just tell you an angle, that's standard. Let's just say it's bearings. That's right. Okay. Let's just say bearing, then you have to involve a little bit. Okay. okay. Uh, everybody okay with one or two? That's okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, let's do three. I, I thought three was um, a more complicated, but that is going to be that is going to show tomorrow. Um, but I think three is going to be straightforward. So similar to before, um, airplane plus the wind equals the results in vector. Um, if they give you two directions, you're going to start in the direction they, they have, which is north, which is 90 degrees. And I got to go west. So it's going to be the second quadrant, it's going to be 90 plus 50. All right, so number three, uh, the airplane is traveling 300 kilometers due west, or due east. So that means I'm going 300 units to the right. I'm not moving north or south. The wind is blowing 35 kilometers per hour at an angle of 255 um, degrees. So I'm just going to use my um, Magnitude cosine theta, magnitude sine theta. I'm just going to add the components. Vector A plus vector W equals vector R. And then once you have your resultant vector, then everything that you need is going to come from the resultant vector, right? You can use uh, the diagonal theorem to get your resulting speed and then your direction. Um, look to see where that resultant vector is pointing, whichever quadrant it's in. Uh, use inverse tangent and then add or subtract 180 or 360 to get to your standard push. That's not big. You know, also get that does. Yeah, it's it's um magnitude. Right? Magnitude is just a diagonal theorem. Or it's asking for um what is the resulting speed? In this case, speed oh. is is the magnitude. Oh, you need a um, number four is similar. It's just the uh, helicopter vector plus the wind vector equals the result of the.
But again, if you see bearing with nothing else, then you know that it's got to be 450. But if they give you directional bearing, then you're either starting at 90 or starting at 270. Adding a support, adding or subtracting a value to get into your to your your um, preferred part uh, of That's that's two seven. South is two seven. One is nine. Excellent strategy. S starts at 270. Almost starts at 4 okay. number four, your answer is um, magnitude or your speed is 74.967 kilometers per hour. And then your your uh, direction theta is 327.131 degrees, fourth quadrant. Excuse then Where is the 450 that you subtract 105 from? Uh, so it says bearing of 105. So bearing is 450 degrees minus uh, the, the. So um, we went through this formula uh, the previous day. How uh, we said that uh, standard position is just 450 minus the true bearing. So we don't have to draw it out. We can just use that formula. Uh, number five, we have two different um, legs of this um, uh, upper uh, path. So we have um, vector one that's described. We have vector two that's described. And I'll add those two and we get our results in vector.
Barry, like, why don't you do it 450 minus 70? Is it 30? Is it 30? Yeah, it's 30. I did. But it still uh, feels like it's outside of my range between zero and 360. So I, I have to subtract another 360. All right? If something doesn't land between zero and 360, you can always find a coterminal angle by adding or subtracting 360. And the way of another way of thinking about this is that these this is such a small degree measure. You can just find that out. This is 90 minus 70, which is 20. But yeah. Uh, subtract from 450 is also fine. You just have to go through another iteration of 360. Right, go ahead and finish up number five. 